organs. Let's get it on. And what kind of major organs have you got major organs? If that makes sense. Probably not. Okay, so he's going to play d4. Now, what shall I play? Um, I'm going to play d5. I'm just going to try out some new openings. One thing I really need to do, and this is so bad of me, I can see that major organs is um, is basically paying on... Oh, oh he's playing the Jabal of London, you cheeky, cheeky man. Is basically, uh, you know, he's, uh, what's it called? That thing where you pay Lee Chess. Because Lee Chess is a site that you, you can decide to pay or not. I really need to start paying them money. What's it called? Patreon. And because it's such a good site, and I just keep forgetting. So remind me at the end of the stream to become a patron to Lee Chess. Because they're a bloody good site and they deserve it. They deserve it. Okay, so the Jabal of London. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to bring my knight out. Let's see what Major Organs knows in the Jabava London and he is he's done stage one okay now what am I going to do against this it's quite intriguing that I'm going to go for a g6 setup many ways you can play against this line but let's let's go for g6 and just see if major organs knows his stuff I'm going to go bishop g7 and now the move here let's see he does major organs has played it h4 and this is certainly uh the best move and he's following my jabava course uh i'm gonna castle professor blundermaster no i i, I do play on on chess.com i play title tuesday there but the reason i prefer lee chess at the moment is that they advertise you so i just get some more viewers when i play in lee chess chess.com don't advertise me uh, anymore <laughs> so that's generally why and um uh, you know, I, I prefer some things on Lee Chess than I do to chess.com, as I do on chess.com to Lee Chess. I'm not getting into that argument. So this is major organs following my suggestion. And now you really can't take that because it comes too dangerous. And because my opponent's attacking on the side, you, you need to attack in the center of the board. So C5, uh, I think, is the best counter uh, attack. Um, and now if major organs takes on g6 i think you have to take with the f pawn uh taking with the h pawn here allows some plan where white can go f3 queen d2 g4 and swing the queen over to h2 uh, and of course i know all this because the jabal of london is something that myself and um my friend blair did a lot of a lot of work on um, El Corio is saying hi drinking beer in Kenya at 4 p.m. Oh my words I'm not gonna say I'm jealous, but I'm just gonna cheers you with my bottle of water here Okay, my opponent developing so now maybe I can take here, but I'm not gonna get involved with that. I'm just gonna develop a piece and um, I'm gonna bring my knight out to to c6 because developing Another move which was very tempting there was to bring the bishop here and put the knight in the pin. And um, knight to f3, I'm not sure if that's the recommended move because it stops any options of playing pawn to f3. It can't be a bad move though because it's developing peace. I don't want to take this pawn with my knight because I'm very scared of rook takes. But this is a very, this is a very good follow-up from white white playing like in the london system and bringing that knight into the center of the board so the one downside of white setup in the jabava london is this is a positive and a weakness it's a weakness because you can't defend d4 as much so to get counterplay i'm going to be thinking of bringing my queen here with pressure against these two guys so i'm just going to take this pawn off first i think but that does allow this kind of idea or do I go queen here first? If I do that, then the knight can come here. Check c3. And then I can go... No, then the knight... Okay, we're going to do it. I, I, I was in two minds about this. The reason I was in two minds is because when white's queen comes here, we can go bishop h6 and it's starting to look very scary. But I need to start counterplay. And this move is starting counterplay very quickly against uh, the pawn on... Um, b2 and the pawn on 
d4. And so I'm not sure if my opponent can defend both of those pawns. Not sure if he can defend both of those pawns. Um, Red Elland is saying, if I played you, the last thing I'd use is move from your courses. I'd have a hell of a chance of some surprises. Well, what you'll find is Red L end <laughs> is that I have done a lot of courses. I have done a lot of moves for a lot of courses, but I can't remember them all. <laughs> and I think this is a common thing with chess authors, especially when you get to a certain age, you, you know, you can't remember shit. <laughs> and uh, you, I can remember quite a lot of it, as I'm showing here. But there's some some of the sharp lines, which are like 20, 30 moves deep. I, I might try to bluff that I can remember them. But I can't, I don't have a clue. I'm literally like like a blind man, like a blind warrior. In, in, a, in a, I just can't remember stuff, just as simple as that. So I wouldn't get freaked out by that. You know, it's a good bluff. I remember playing Grandmaster from Greece. And the Grandmaster was, uh, I can't even remember what courses he's done. I, 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 well, hang on a minute, Aldo. Just you, hang on a second, sir. I can remember some of them. I can remember the courses I'd done, but I've done so many, you know. Uh, I, was play I was playing this Grandmaster from Greece and he played some really crap line against the Dutch defence. And I got a very good position, should have won, it was a draw. Halikas, I think, about 2600. And after the game he goes, well, I couldn't play the Dutch against you because you're the expert in the Dutch. And I'm thinking, yeah, but if you'd have played the main line Dutch, the chances are I wouldn't have remembered the theory, but I'm not gonna tell you that. I love the idea that people are dodging my openings and playing crappy openings to dodge them. That is great, yeah? If people are scared of your openings and they start playing really weird stuff, it's like you're onto a winner, right? Yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So um, so that, so that's good. Uh, okay, so now, my opponent is certainly getting ready to checkmate me. I'm a little bit scared here, I must admit. I'm not going to take that pawn now because rook b1 and I'm losing. Oh, but I can go knight there, but then he takes my queen, I take there. Now, something like this, knight d4, knight e4 looks sensible. I could grab this pawn, but I'm going to get mated if I do that. So I don't like getting checkmated generally. I could bring the bishop around here. That's not stupid either. Bishop here, and if he takes, I take with a bishop. That's a very good defender, actually. I might do that first, just bringing in my last piece. And next move, I'm going to play something aggressive. And I want to try to break while my opponent's king is here. So he's got this plan, bishop h6, getting the queen to h6, and then trying to checkmate me here. But his king is in the middle, right? And if he castles queenside, I should be able to get some attack on, on the b-file here. Uh, Andre, I want to learn the Dragdorf. Can you tell me the difference between your book, this new Sicilian dragon, and your course, Killer Dragon? Um, you want me to remember the lines in both of those, do you? <laughs> no, in, in general, uh, they're quite similar. Um, the Sicilian dragon number two. By the way, I'm going to take here now because I can take on C2. The uh, Killer Killer Dragon two deals with the Dragdorf, and the book books are generally going to be more detailed generally compared to um generally more detailed compared to uh video courses because video courses are more about explaining the ideas so the book will maybe have uh, more oomph in it but again it depends how you prefer learning how do you prefer learning this is this is the key point if you prefer watching videos uh, then i would just get the video course um I think it's only 10 pounds or something and i can even show you how to use it with g chess if you want later on but if you prefer books get the book simple as that okay well my opponent has come with the attack over here on the king side but for unfortunately for him as soon as i get rid of his queen um his attack won't be that scary and i can also now cash in and start taking some pieces so I'm grabbing the rook on that square and I've won a nice bit of material and without white's queen I think it's gonna be very hard for white to get an attack uh, down down on my king side so I'm feeling fairly safe here um, I think he should have taken that piece but he's trying to be clever here 
which is well that's kind of clever because my bishop is weirdly trapped right but i can yeah that's a that's a weirdly clever clever move i say weirdly because i didn't expect it um okay so i'm gonna now move my knight here and i'm gonna try and break in the center of the board um or simply take this pawn let's grab that pawn um and bishop takes d4 is looking pretty good for me thank you by the way anyone who is subscribing who has been subscribing what's the longest tc that you're accepting uh is that i'm just trying to work out what tc means is that time oh plays chess at work thank you very much getting some real generosity recently in this twitch channel uh it's probably because you all saw all the other twitch channels we're making you know like half a million a year and my name wasn't on those channels i make nothing i make nothing no i do all right i do all right from the generosity of you guys signing up to things like g chess and, and other things so but thank you very much plays chess at work that, that that is extremely extremely kind of you and it is very much appreciated okay shit i've got to watch my time there i was talking i, I didn't even have a look at my clock okay but uh, we are getting two seconds of move so i'm pretty confident here it looks like i've got f i've got like four pawns extra and um a rook extra so i'm just going to use look at these look at this little mass this is this is damn sexy i'm getting the last one in the oh god just don't no that's my rook i was worried about could you believe i was worried about rook f8 checkmate I've just realised that's my rook, Simon. <laughs> I've, I've wor I was worried about this move here. Oh my god, he can go rook there, checkmate. No, that's my rook. You're safe. You're safe. You're safe, Simon. Okay. Thank you very much for the game, um, uh, Major Organs. Um, I think it was. I think that was a, a pretty good game, and uh, I think you played the opening well there. Um, we're going to have a look at that game. Uh, major organs uh, and we're gonna uh, just see where we both could improve that's what we're doing today now I know this might not be to everyone's interest but one of the best ways to improve in chess and this is what the the Russians used to do when they were so strong they, they said the, the Soviet school of chess in the 70s they were the best until you know Bobby Fischer came along and challenged for them in the 70s but 60s 70s 80s what they said the most important thing to do was to analyze your games and they were normally talking about longer time limit games. We're not going to do that here because we'd be here forever. We're going to do it with quicker time limits. Um, but I, I do want to have a look at this game. And I'm going to take you through the process of doing that. Couldn't we import games from Lee Chess into G Chess? Or am I doing it manually? Have I to report the games? Yannick. Yannick. Calm down, man. Calm down. It's very easy to do it, Yannick. Uh, I think we might get Bjorn in the chat, who's the G-Chess guy. But all you've got to do... Now, I'm going to be using the beta, better version of G-Chess. But if you go to gchess.com, and okay, you have to be subscribed. This is the main page on gchess.com. This is the old page. All you have to do, basically, you see these tabs up here, follow the mouse. This is the main page. You Basically, this is the home page here. You go to explore. You press explore. This is the main page and our new tab, my games here, will list all of your games. You just have to put your handle in and you get your game up there. Now, the version I'm using, by the way, I'm gonna be using just our new version. I'll just show you what it looks like. It's quite exciting, actually. This is what our new uh, G Chess website is gonna look like. Um, pretty boy on the front there. We had to get a pretty boy in the front because if we got a picture of me, people will run a mile. So we had, we had to find a pretty boy, pr pretty poster boy. I don't know who he is. Some kind of famous model, I believe, um, to, to model G Chess for us. And you basically, all you have to do is put your name in here and it will take you to this page. And you can see my, my name is there. And um, we have to just update the game there which we'll do in a second but let me just catch up on the chat there hello to ken hello ken how you doing good to see you um good to see you doing all right 
Uh, where is the analysis page? Okay, I'll just walk through. I'll just walk through it one more time. And this site will change. But if you go to gchess.com, bang. I oh, can't see the link. It's just called gchess.com. This is the home page. We're changing this. Just go to explore. That's where most of the things are. This will open up. The first thing you'll see, follow the mouse, is my games. My games is here. And then you put in your chess.com handle here. We don't think we need to integrate with anyone else, to be honest. We're, we're kind of doing things our way. And you put in your Lee Chess handle here. And then you and you can do that by pressing the edit handle thing. So you just put your name into that bit there. Ginger Jim's my name. You update it. And then you close. And then you just refresh the games. And you can get all these analysis your games. Um, I think what we'll do, we we'll do two game we we'll do two games at a time. So let's get who else wants to play? Just so we get another I, I want to get another game in first. Then we'll look we'll look at two games at a time. Because otherwise it, it might get a bit boring. Who who wants to play next? So uh, all you got to do um, is uh, tell me your handle. Okay, Lee Charpentier. Lee Charpentier. You are a sub and you told me your handle, so let's play a game. And I've got the white pieces here. So we're gonna, we'll look at two games at once, I think, just so we get a bit of chess in and then a bit of analysis. Uh, okay. And Lee Charpenter has gone B6. And this is Lawrence Trent's new course. Um, uh, Declan, sorry, you have to go. Work is work can be horrible, can't it? No one likes work. And I'm now gonna play, and this is where I, this is where my memory might go a little bit. B6 is still quite a rare move. And this was covered in my Grandmaster Gambit's course. And I think we recommended this move, Knight C3 when you allow black to pin your knight. And I'm just trying to remember what myself and Richard Palliser had here. Well, the good thing is I can check this out. This is Owen's defense. If you want to learn about this opening, Lawrence Trent has something quite cool on it, but this move is a little bit new. This is now going into a uh, hippo. I have to admit, I don't think this is a very good setup, B6 and G6, when white can play f4 which i'm going to do my rule is if you can get these three pawns here then this setup is really quite bad for black what why is it bad for black because at some point i'm going to go f5 and check mate if my pawn was on f2 then black setup is playable certainly but with the pawn here i'm just going to develop my pieces i'm not going to rush and at some point i'm going to play f5 and i'm going to check mate him and I can even bring the queen over first if I so wish. I could even play it now. Let's bring the queen over first. I'm not going to rush. He can maybe play f5 himself. He has played f5, so maybe I should have done that there. But even this is a little bit suspicious. This setup for uh, for for black. Black's very um, cramped in, in this kind of setup. Probably should have gone f5 last move though. I must admit. Um, okay, I'm just going to play normal moves. I'm going to try to get my other pawn going over here. What? How is Trent getting on with his Grandmaster deadline? I think extremely poorly at the moment, Aldo. Uh, I don't think he's really tried yet, Aldo, because COVID's been, COVID has kind of made it traveling very, very hard. I think tournaments only now are, are trying to, are, are coming back. Chess tournaments only now. So he, he's, he's been delayed a little bit. Um, uh, Andrew saying, I saw your videos in Dragdorf on chess.com. Well, very kind. Thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, the, I have to say the Ginger GM videos, which I've created, just defending this pawn with that move, are, uh, the, they're, they're quite high level, but also they're relevant for lower level as well. So we try to make them as, you know, accessible as we can, but there's quite a lot of theory quite a lot of theory in them as well you received a level two height train emote woohoo no idea what that means but i will press enter choo 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 there you go there is my level two there's my level two emote it's the happiest day of my life choo choo see how happy i am there 
ecstatic. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna now I'm gonna now attack. I think because um, we've done enough of this, and this is the problem with this setup. When the attack comes, it can be pretty strong. So this is a little bit dangerous because I'm opening up my king, but I'm, I'm just going to go all in. And with my bishop here and my queen coming over here, I'm just going to try and try and kill him on these squares. So the combination of maybe knight takes h7, queen h4, it could be dangerous for him. Now, is it sound? It looks interesting. I mean, I can also put the other knight here maybe. Um, so he's... he's playing like there's nothing to worry about but I thought this was a threat well I could even take there and bring the other knight in I've got so many attractive ideas I quite like this king takes knight g5 check the king comes back queen h4 bishop here bishop takes g6 but what do I do or do I do this and even oh there's so many tempting moves here here takes check back takes here I'm just going to bring this one I'm too lazy I'm too lazy I'm too lazy here I'm too lazy um, so um, and this is Lee Chess well done yeah this is Lee Chess no uh, da, 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 da. Uh, okay, so I'm just I'm trying to checkmate him basically because I hear that's quite quite the thing you're supposed to do in chess. You're supposed to go for the checkmates, and um, my opponent is trying to defend now. Maybe I should have done something more vicious, but I'm just going to move the bishop here because I want to get my other knight here. But I want to defend my rook and. and I've got my pieces all ready at this moment in time. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have that one. Thank you very much, sir. His position was very difficult, actually, because I think as soon as my knight comes in, something was bound to happen. But that made life a lot easier for me as my queen now enters into the attack. Milky, don't be scared to play me. Don't, don't be scared to play me. I, 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 it doesn't matter if you lose. It really doesn't matter. I, I'm not that scary. Really, I'm not. I don't think. Am I scary? Do, am I scary? If you saw me in a, in a dark alley and I came running at you shouting, Fuck a duck, fuck a duck, fuck a duck. You wouldn't be scared, would you? You'd be fine, surely. I'm not scary. I would run. <laughs> I would run. Run for the hills. <laughs> Big core. Yeah, you can see my blood pressure went up there just by doing that. Uh, you know, we're not doing that again. Pff, too much blood pressure there. GM Camel Rider. Are oh, you actually a grandmaster who, who, who rides a camel? That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That would be very cool. Okay, I'm going to just take the pawns in. Um, I watch all your YouTube videos and brought some of your Ginger Gem Courses. I would purchase G Chess. But I can only pay with credit card. I, but I can only pay with credit card, and I don't have that. Uh, yeah, we really need to. How would you like to pay? Is the other question. I mean, we've really. I mean, I'm really keen on trying to get PayPal payments set up, but for some reason we haven't done that yet. How would you like to pay? Uh, we only do a set credit cards at the moment, but um, we, we of course we'll have to look at other ways to allow you to pay. So good point there, and you know, play with natural, pay with natural what? Natural beauty, um, uh, natural, natural, natural what? Natural what? Bitcoin. I'd love it if you could pay with Bitcoin. I think that'd be awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I think, I, you know, I think Bitcoin. It'd be cool. It'd be cool if you could pay with Bitcoin. Bit, 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 Bitcoin. Let's get it right. What am I doing? I'm just moving. I'm moving out of the way of the knight coming in there. Ginger coin. Well, I don't know. We, I kind of that idea disappeared, didn't it? Pay with beard compliments. You're not going to get past me with beard compliments, I'm afraid. Um, I don't know. We should have PayPal as well, but I, I don't know how else you you would uh, you would like to pay. You'd have to tell us, yeah. Uh. 
I, I, I would sell my house for ginger coin. Beer coin next. There's bound to be beer coin eventually. What am I doing? I'm, I'm not really paying attention here, am I? Um, okay, let's just take here to stop his knight coming in. I'm two pawns up. And he's only got one piece, which is cutting across. So as long as I stop his knight coming in, uh, then he can't do any damage with one piece. And I'm just going to start throwing my extra pawns up the board. Let's do it. Happy Beave. Hello there. Thank you for the cheer. Happy Beave. Very, very kind of you. Thanks. Can you tell us a story again at the tournament where someone glued a pawn down? I forgot what it was. <laughs> well, apparently there was a story. Um, I don't know how true it is, but it's a nice story. And it was at the British Chess Championships. And it it was a it, it took part in a very big hall where there were many 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 players um sorry i still need to think i'm gonna swap off and um the tournament hall had like four or five hundred players that it would allow to play and um just trying to come in here and um one of the players he lost the game the the night the day before and he was really really annoyed and upset uh, and he was so upset that he thought right i'm going to get my own back on all the players in the tournament and um, he decided to illegally creep into the tournament hall at he waited until night time it was dark he got in for a window to the tournament hall with a bag. He just had one bag. And in that bag, okay, let me just, I've got to think here. In that bag, he, he, what did he have in that bag? He had lots of tubs of glue, just glue. He came prepared with glue, nothing else but glue. Let me just see, can I do that? And do that probably but let's not lose this one he's gonna go okay let's go there and uh, he basically went around as many boards as he could and he glued all the kings down because they're all set up for the next day these chess boards there was like you know 300 chess boards set up and that's a nasty idea and he went in there and he basically oh thank you for the game um the carpenter uh we'll have a look at that as well a bit later on see how you got on i think now we can analyze the game so if he basically he got all the kings and he super glued them to the board and then the next day all the players came in for the british champ championships they sat down at their board i think it was the kings they got into the opening they shook hands they started moving the pieces the story is obviously a load of bollocks but anyway they started moving the pieces and then one board like board 50 he tried a castle and he picked up his king and his king picked up the whole board and all the pieces went flying and then another board board 28 did the same he went to castle and he threw all the pieces because when he moved his king the board went flying the pieces went everywhere and then everyone in the hall was trying to castle around the same time about move seven and pieces were going everywhere the kings were stuck to the board no one could castle no one could castle all chaos broke out and the chess player got his revenge a chess player's revenge <laughs> do you believe that story do you believe that story i don't know i don't know if i believe it but hey ho okay right now we're going to look at this game and the last game i played because the idea of this was to do a bit of analysis and like i say i'm going to go to uh the website and we got bjorn in the chat uh, and bjorn's one of the programmers for um g chess so you can ask him any questions this is the main page this is the better version but you'll get the same sort of thing and just to explain how it works um, my opponent from the first round was called Major Organs. So I'm just going to simply put his name into the handle here. And we're going to do that. We edit handles. And you can put your Lee Chess handle in. So I'm just going to type it in there. Major Organs. 
we're going to update the system so imagine this is you look now major organs the player i just played i can see all of his games that he's played on leeches and we can load as many as we want and we can look at all of his games now this is his game he played against me right major organs versus ginger gm so the next thing you can do and i'm just going to get rid of this bit here the my games bit because we've got the results now rather than me analyzing it we just press analyze and that will come up there with the improvements that is in our system in the opening so at the moment the opening improvements we have here for major organs major organs was right um are quite vast so let's just go through the games and, and see see what we get so i'm just going to look at it from major organs point of view because i think i played all right we're going to have a little look um basically at and you can all do this by the way this is not just anyone if you're a subscriber you can put your own games in and you can find resources in your own games that will help improve your game and the reason we created this was i love blitz everyone loves blitz but blitz is quite bad for your chess how can we make blitz in a way that it can prove your openings in a way that other people aren't doing so um the game against major organs now we're going to look at it from his side he played the jabava london great so he's done everything okay so far this is a main line and the way what our system does what our system actually does okay play h in it, it basically it finds moves which it thinks are better according to our computer so it finds it's supposed to find big improvements on the plate at certain points now it does have some other suggestions here but it also as you can see h5 is the main move because you can see we have lots of resources here but after c5 you can actually recall that i was right i did say that i thought knight f3 was maybe a slight mistake and our program has picked up that knight to f3 as there are other suggestions here is not the move you should be playing so what should you be playing well again we've got our deep analysis here now basically on any site you can get deep computer analysis so that's nothing new you can you can get analysis on lee chess on chess.com so where where are we different we have all of these things so we have one two three four five six resources on this position and these are all resources which are not just computer resources so let's have a look at youtube and youtube should probably come up first but if i click the youtube thing here yeah just to see what these resources are okay it will take me to this bit here i press search and look it's me <laughs> so we can actually see and I, we can see like this h takes g6 move which i mentioned in the game looks like the best move to play so we can learn about the way we should play this position so in the future we never make the same mistake so in the future we never bring our knight out in the future we will always take on g6 and we can use all of these resources now just to understand the opening very quickly you play a game you check it you improve you go back you play another blitz game we're trying to make it as fun as you can so i'm just going to play this video so we're just going to have a look at the resources here very quickly so we are played a video i'll make the board big probably going to be me losing and swearing and it seems like he knows his theory i can't remember mine at the moment at the moment even though i've written a lot about this is it f3 story. or queen d2 i can't remember which moves best let's go queen d2 well, i can't remember now victor stoyanov 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 is that how you say it i played him at hastings very very talented junior and i have done i have covered this position for um my chessable course but i'm just trying to remember what play now i do remember that this followed by queen h2 was one idea i recommended and we're basically going to have a rush well even though even though there um i said i can't remember if you were listening earlier you may recall that i did say during the game that after this move i have to take with the f pawn because if they take with the h pawn 
then this idea of queen d2, f3, g4, queen h2 can be very strong. So even though I say I can't remember, of course I can remember. So that is one resource you can get about that position. So you already get an explanation about why this move is probably not right. Now let's just go through the other resources. So this next resource is chess.com. And this will bring up basically online. This brings up online games in this position after h takes g6 by the strongest players around. So you can see here Daniel Naroditschke, he lost the game. And if you want to look at those games, you just literally click on the game and that will move it to the main board, as you see here. And you can just click through the game. Depends which side you want to look at it from. I might make this board a bit bigger because I like seeing a big board. And we're going to have a look where Daniel Naroditschke went wrong. Well, already I can probably say where Daniel Naroditschke went wrong here because he brought his knight out to f3. And from that YouTube video, I know, and even our computer analysis says that queen d2, f3, g4 is the right idea. So that's great. So now I just go back to my games and we go back to the PGN that we're on. We've added another PGN here. And that was YouTube we've looked at, chess.com. So what about Lee Chess? Well, Lee Chess is kind of the same thing. We just go to Lee Chess and it brings up Ushko the Bear. Ushko the Bear, Blair Connell. We can actually have a look at what Blair Connell did. My good friend Blair, and he won a game. So Blair knows this very well. Did Blair play this correctly? Well, Blair, after this one, did not play it correctly. He also took here, so even Blair could improve. We know now Queen D2, F3, G4 is the right idea. Um, what other resources do we have here? Well, let's just go back. Um, we have Ginger GM. So if you've brought my Ginger GM course, my video course, you can link in any Ginger GM video with G Chess. And this is where it gets really powerful because what you do next, you can basically, this is how I suggest you learn. And this is another reason we made this. You watch a Ginger GM video, like on the Jabava London, which you can download from the shop. You learn the opening from watching that video. And then you go out and you have some fun playing it. Go and play it on Lee Chess. And then the problem that a lot of people were saying, and we've quite trying to think of a way to fix this, is that they go and play the opening from a Ginger Gym video, like the Jabbar of London, but during the Blitz games, they can't remember what they were supposed to do. How many times have you done that? You've learned something from a book, from a video, you go and play it, but you can't remember what you're supposed to be doing. Well, this system will pick up in your games where, where what you couldn't remember. So if you go to the Ginger Gym bit here, we can see that the Jabava London comes up here. I'm just going to click that. It brings up the variation from the video. I'm going to click that. And if I press the video bit here, maybe I'm not, I'm probably not, oh, it's on staging. But this, when it works, will show you the video clip from the Ginger GM video. And um, so, but also just looking at the file. So basically you can see my Ginger GM video, it does give here H takes queen d2 which we know is correct now and let's say um well pawn takes d4 is the main line it's e takes and here i've got this move so that looks very good for me and look at the computer the computer gives this as practically winning for white um so what about we know queen d2 is good if he plays a normal move what's white's plan well, we can see that the plan, as I said before, is this g4 and queen h2. And again, the computer gives us as winning for white. So it's a very powerful thing. And because this is only on better testing, on the real Ginger Gem site, you'll be able to watch the video of it as well. So we're already learning what my opponent did wrong here. We're learning that this knight to f3 move that he played was actually, actually not the best move to play. And he should, by the looks of it, take on g6 in this position and there's even more resources we have the encyclopedia so you can see here this encyclopedia this is actually from my this has my chessable course here so you can look up my chessable course and you've got loads of loads of stuff you can read here with grandmaster analysis look you get all this analysis so you can just browse through any opening and learn things at your own will so it's so going back to the game where did my opponent go wrong this is what you need to do so if he got the same line again he wouldn't play knight to f3 by looking at these resources he can pick what he likes and he now knows that h takes g6 is the way to go now 
if he wants to, we've only really looked at what happens if black plays h takes g6. Maybe my opponent is thinking, well, what if they take with the f pawn? Well, you can also just put this on the board and all the resources up here, if you follow my mouse on the right hand side, with the orange are resources we have stored in our system. It's a bit like the Googler chess. So other systems just use a computer, but this uses in the encyclopedia, you've got grandmaster analysis here. So for example, Aronian Nepo, we can look at this game and we can see how these two play. We can get some ideas. This is from my chessball course, so it's linked into chessball. From the Ginger GM, again, you can get the video up here. So you can watch the Ginger GM video directly of this position. You don't have to, you know, fast forward through the video. It goes directly to the position. And you can also look at the latest games in the week in chess. We've got an opening tree here. So if you want to, you can just even look at the stats, what moves work best. And you can see here that actually Knight C6 is scoring very well for black. So there's many ways you can explore this system. Um, at the moment, uh, G Chess, uh, if you follow the link in the chat, uh, we're, we're now offering a year subscription there uh, for, for the price of 10 months. So if you get you get 10, I think it's night, we're doing $99, but that's for a year subscription of this. So you get full access to this for a year, everything. So I think that's quite a cool deal in actual fact. Can you watch the chessboard video? No, unfortunately you can't watch the chessboard videos on this site. We're not we're not doing the videos. There. It's only Ginger GM videos and YouTube videos at the moment. But before the price goes up, these things might be coming. Okay, let's have a look. So I think that that first game was was um, we can see major organs. And again, if you want to look at all your other games, we could even what we could do. We could really find out where my opponent's weaknesses is just by pressing these analysis buttons. You can see that it's going to bring up moves where it thinks he's going wrong. So and other ways, but let's 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 get someone else now into the system, and I want to look at my my second opponent. Um, so my second opponent was, let's have a look. Um, his name was the carpenter, wasn't it? So let's just bring in the carpenter. So we just got to change his handle. It's very easy to do. I'm just putting his handle in here. So very very easy. We update. And you can see already it has all of his games here. Yeah. And look, here's the game with Ginger GM. So what you do, very, very easy to do. You just press analyze. So we're just going to press analyze. And already it brings up lots of suggestions in the opening where maybe the carpenter, I'll call him the carpenter, could have played. And again, the way this our system works at the moment, we're looking at it from his point of view because we want to help him improve. It doesn't look at all the resources available. It looks at moves where the evaluation, according to the computer, drops a lot. So you can see here already the computer thinks the opening is not very good for black. Don't tell Lawrence Trent that. But after G6, you can see the computer drops even more. So the computer basically thinks G6 is a mistake. And I would agree with that. I would agree that G6 is a mistake. But it does give many other suggestions and normally the suggestion with most of the you know with the move with most of the suggestions is the one you want to play so all you want to do you can see the e6 i think is certainly a better idea trying to get the bishop here and again you've got all of these resources so let's just have a look just for the use of the carpenter um let's have a look carpenter and just to help you out Let's see what YouTube videos we have on this. And this is where, I mean, the YouTube thing is really clever because again, we're trying to save time. Uh, if you, I mean, how many of you want to look at a certain opening on YouTube or a certain position? You can't really do that, but you can in G Chess. You can put the position on the board and you can just use this and you can look at it. Oh my God, shall we have a look at Benjamin Feingold? Uh, oh my words, I might want to kill myself after this, but oh god i haven't heard his voice for well i haven't i i, I don't know if I want, okay come on ben let's hear it let's see what ben says about this position shall we okay oh my god it has to be done <laughs> not much yeah the only way to make money in the world is to stream chess that's there's no other otherwise you're just being silly <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Well, that was incredibly insightful. Um, so the only way to make money in chess is to stream chess. Thank you, Ben. I wanted to learn about the opening. I didn't want to learn about your your woes and, and, and how to make how to become a millionaire. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Okay, let's just have a look at another video because that was no help. Oh, let's look at Eric Rosen. Everyone loves a bit of Eric Rosen. Let's go and have a look what Eric Rosen thinks about this. Yes, moves is that you end up in this position and they just defend everything the way they should. Mm -hmm. And the amount of success that stems from this particular position is kind of crazy mm -hmm. that um, after bishop d2, you, you always take. And um, if they take with the pawn, you go knight c6. And really, really common is, let's say, the castle or something. That's fine. You, you sort of play like, Knight a5, h6, and you're all about the light squares. Um, but some people will take because they realize that there's no like knight d4, no knight e5. Mm -hmm. And uh, although they've planned knight a5, queen g4, um, it's, I think it's pretty much losing for white after this. Like wow. it, I guess just lost. Rook g8 and... I have to say, that was a damn good explanation. So there you go. Already, the carpenter, if you watch that video a couple of times, right, and we've got the time code of this, you found a good video you can save that video under your thing so already if you want to play this opening again with b6 you've got aman hamilton there and he's explaining a very good line there for black on youtube and i have to say that is that is really quite cool i think um now we do also have just one other tab we you know we have some of the short and sweet sections here from chessboard courses so you can also have a look at it owen's defense and you can see here that um, this line, black is known to be fine in the old main line. And he's actually saying that Magnus Carlsen played this move. So there's many different resources you've got here, as, as you can see, right? And you can save all your PGNs up here. You can save it as you go along. So it's, uh, I, I think it's a pretty, pretty useful little challenge in thing you got. Um, I, I, if I was gonna learn this, if I wanted to learn, I'd look at that video. Um, I think our encyclopedia, the book thing, is one of the coolest things. We've basically created an encyclopedia, um, and this has all my chessboard courses in it. So if, you, if you've got any of my chessboard courses, you can practice your blitz games against it. It also has grandmaster analysis by other people. We, we give a little, so basically the Owens defense is B6, and what do we say about it? Also known as Queen's Fianchetto defense. Um, is an uncommon opening. However, white has many ways to meet this opening. That being said, b6 has been played by Spielman, Tony Miles, and we give it a little value. So it's got good surprise value, basically, this opening here. And if we look at what um, I say in my chessboard course, which is written from the white side, we can just bring that up. So let's go down here and I can load in this. And after e6, I now wanna have actually a look at what I recommend white plays. So I know, because I wasn't really sure after e6 what to play. And I'm gonna flip the board around. So remember, I had white in this game. And bishop d3, so this is jogging my memory, is the best square for the bishop. This is from my chessboard course. And now bishop b4 was the move that Aman mentioned. So there's many other options here, but you can look at the other options if you want to. And now knight to e2. So this seems to be the key move. And I think Amman only gave the knight coming to f3. But you can see that Richard Palliser, who, who did the work with me on this, gives this as a much better move. And um, there are many options here that you can go into detail looking at. But again, you can investigate every opening in as much or as little detail as you want to. Um, so there you go. I mean... Um, uh, so just just you know looking through that's how you can use this to improve prove your games and that's how we're using it by looking at Lee chess and doing it like I say you get 10 months subscription for 12 months if you're interested now answer any questions then we'll play another game Mesa Bill thanks Simon your tip to stick to a single opening with white helped me a lot to improve just like your okay brilliant well I'm very glad about that yeah what I recommend is when you're starting out in chess until you get to stone stand just pick one opening don't try to learn too many different openings because you, it, it, as you can see just from this, it takes a long time to master one opening. Um, let's see what else people are saying. 
Eric Rosing is a lovely person. Yeah, I forgot that if you stream something, I I, I like those. I, imagine if Ben Feingold copyrights me for that. Oh God, that'd be a nightmare. <laughs> oh, don't even say that. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, da, da. Any other things coming out? Okay, well let's get back to playing another game now. Uh, Bjorn can answer any your questions about uh, basically about G chess. So who's next then? So remember, if you want to play me, your time limit is five plus two. Just let me know now in the chat what your handle is. What your handle is. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll play you another. I'll play you another day, Chess Pats at UK. Uh, tribute to. Let's play you tribute to uh, Jack Johnson because you were first up that I can see there. Uh, da, da, da. So yeah, you don't have to subscribe straight away. You 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 can um. You can just have a look and see. Okay, so we're, we're in with another game. So, I, I, you know, we, we were talking about the Jabava London system earlier. So I'm going to now play that from the white side. Because I also play that from the white side. And the Jabava London, the first three steps is you bring the knight and bishop out like this. So, stage one, let's bring the knight out. I, I want to try to play e4 if I can. And you can remember, I had this position the first game today, right? With the black pieces so i'm going to play like i can't remember there it was organ something major organs played this move against me which is stage one of the jabal of london now this is one of the main lines c5 and i'm just going to play the move e3 here which you're adapting to if he takes here i'm going to take back and one of my main one of the main ideas in the jabal of london is to go knight b5 i couldn't do that last move because he would have queen a5 check and my bishop wasn't defending the knight but now after this move that was certainly possible but this line here he could have taken on d4 first this line here my memory is okay i can actually take this pawn and this is what you should do alicia hello hello everyone from alicia's channel uh thank you so much for the raid uh Cheers with my glass of water. I hope you're doing right, Alicia, and I hope your streaming is going well. And hello, everyone from Alicia's channel. I'm just taking on in the stream today anyone on Lee Chess who wants to play me. And uh, yeah, hello to everyone. Glad you can join. And I'm talking a bit about the Jabava London system in this game, which is an opening I love and play a lot. Uh, my opponent's developed his knight now, and my opponent wants to play e5 here. So I think it's right I develop my piece and stop that move. So let's do that. Got to develop our pieces at the start of the game. Control some central squares. It's all about the centre. We want to control that centre. And the problem for Black in these positions is actually it's not so easy for him to win this pawn back. But the first thing we need to do when we're playing chess, and I've got a feeling my opponent's quite strong here. He's playing good moves. We've got to look at what our opponent is trying to do, what his idea is. And I did say that e5 was a main idea. And it strikes me that black's pinning my knight in order to maybe play e5 because I can't take it with a knight. So how are we going to deal with that? Do we just defend that one? This is where I might have to use the g chestness afterwards. I think I'm going to break the pin. I could also do some, try to be clever with like knight over there, but... Should we try to be clever? But I don't know. No, I'm just going to break the pin. I'm just going to develop. He can win his pawn back. He can have his pawn back. He's allowed to take his pawn back. That's not a problem. You can do that if you want to. So maybe e5 is a more aggressive try. Now, I definitely like this move. And one of the problems with my opponent's position is that he's gone a6. And that means he's lost a little bit of control of the b6 square. So I'm going to play knight here. If he checks me, I just go c3, my queen defends the knight. He can actually take this pawn and then check me and win the knight back. But if Jack Johnson, the tribute to Jack Johnson does that, at least I win the bishop pair. And the bishop pair can be quite useful. Otherwise, if I get one more move to castle, I'm not sure he's ever gonna win this pawn back here. This pawn here is not easy to win. The only way he can win it back is actually maybe taking there now. Because if he goes check first, c3, Bishop takes c5. I might have b4, and that's forking his pieces. So he's played bishop takes, 
And I've had this actually in a real game. I'm going to take that bishop, winning a piece. My opponent wins that piece back. And now I've got to think about my theory. I forgot my theory now already. Do you play queen d2 or do I play c3? Queen d2 I think will run into knight e4 later on. So I'm just going to block it with my pawn. And here... I'm just going to castle because castling is never a bad move unless you castle to a checkmate in one, which I have seen next to me. I saw I saw this was like when I was a kid. Um, I was about I was about two thousand grade, and the, the guy next to me was a mate of mine. He was two thousand one hundred, and he'd been out the night before, and it was quite a complicated opening. But he he was blitzing his moves out. He's probably still a bit hungover, and he castled really quickly. Like you know, he wasn't really thinking. He had his coffee. His first coffee of the day, and he castled. He just like bang, 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 bang. He castled, and his opponent played queen takes h2 checkmate. <laughs> it was really funny. Not funny for him. His opponent had like a bishop and a queen here, and he just went queen takes h2 checkmate, and he was like, and he was like, what the hell is going on? Uh, where did that come from? Okay. Anyway, back to the game. So what I'm now thinking is my dark square bishop could be quite good in the centre of the board. So I'm going to try and swap off these knights and get my bishop on these dark squares because I have a dark square bishop. My opponent does not have a dark square bishop. So I'm offering the exchange of these guys. I don't really mind that uh, because when my queen moves up, my rooks get connected. I'm very solid pawn structure. The only advantage I can claim to have is my dark square bishop. So my opponent is swapping there. I'll take back and let's recapture there. And... Um, if my opponent captures here, I'll take with a bishop. And at some point, I'll probably try to play a move like c4. Something along those lines and, and try to break up like that. c4, try to try to do some action over there. Maybe the rook here, try to get my rook on the open line. My opponent has, I would say, maybe a better pawn structure. Because my opponent has one more pawn in the centre. But I have no pawn weaknesses, so I'm not worried. I don't have any weaknesses. There's nothing too much to worry about. we just got to think of ways to improve our position. And that's why I'm trying to get control of some central squares with my pieces by getting rid of the knight that's defending it. Now, my opponent is offering me to take that knight, but I don't want to do that because that moves another one of my opponent's pawns nearer to the center. I'm kind of thinking I, I want to play the c4 move and it's probably the right time to do it now because I get rid of my opponent's central pawn. I offer the exchange and I'm hoping the more pawns I can clear off the board the better my long range pieces become. And what I mean by that is I have one more long range piece a bishop compared to a short range piece of knight. So I'm trying to clear the way of my long range pieces by exchanging off these pawns with this move. So my opponent's played a very sensible move, just getting ready to, after capture, capture, put some pressure there. So I'm probably gonna do the same. Why not? Let's move my knight to defend that one. That's not a knight, is it? What's that called? That's not called a knight, is it? That's a rook. That's a rook. The rooks are those things that look like a castle and those knights are the horsey ones. Is that right? Is that right? Okay, well, we're going to take this one. I think that's how you do it. I think that's how you do it. Um, so we're going to take Bishop here. Well, I do look at the chat. I do look at the chat. Uh, brain Is that Brain Hacker? I do occasionally look at the chat, but I, I, I often ignore it. I can't do everything. I can't do everything. And to be honest, um, I only saw the comment, you are fake Ginger GM. And I thought, is there any point reacting to that? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to continue my strategy. I'm getting a little bit short time here. And the strategy is to try and prove in the ending that this bishop is better. So we might get more exchanges. But I don't want to give up this file unless I have to. So if I capture there, I give up the file. By moving my rook here, if my opponent captures, I get my queen and I keep the file. So I don't want to give up the open file. And I want to get my other rook there. My opponent has a very nice knight in the centre of the board, but luckily for me, that knight is not completely stable. If I didn't have a pawn on this square, I think black would just be better, because I'll be a, not because I'd be a pawn down, but because I can never chase that knight away. 
But the fact that I can always chase that knight away with a pawn means that that knight is not stable. But the first thing to do is try to take over the open file. Okay, now that knight, could it be coming there and annoying me? Well, it could be. So I'm just going to try to restrict my opponent's knight. And when you're playing against a knight, a very good strategy is try to restrict that. But where does this bishop want to go now? I'm going to try to keep it on the queen side, I think. Um, the reason I'm trying to keep it on the queen side, which I could regret, because I could... My opponent, by the way, playing an excellent game here. Really, really well, well, well played. Maybe there's a new rating, but he's playing like perfect chess. I didn't want to put my bishop there, because after e5, my bishop gets blunted by the pawn. I want to keep it on the queen side. Um, but I'm thinking now, uh, maybe I shouldn't say the moves in case my opponent is listening to it, but my opponent playing an incredibly good game, that my opponent has a pretty decent idea here. Um, now that one I wasn't so worried about. I thought maybe e5 was a bit more worrying. I'm very, and now, should I get rid of the queen? I think I'm going to give my king an escape square because I'm looking at the back rank and I'm thinking, no, 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 I, breathe king. Breathe, king. Come forwards, my king. Breathe some fresh air. Okay, so now I've given it away what the best move is. I have to move here with a bishop. And how am I going to try to win this position? Which, well, not losing time. Let's remember that. I'm going to, at some point, try to kick that knight. And, again, try to claim that my bishop is better than the knight in an ending. That's how I'm going to try to do it. Because bishops... Are very good when there's pawns on both sides of the board in the ending knights are good when they're on only okay so I can now take that and come in and that's a very safe way to be better so I'm gonna do that now I did say my bishop is better but the reason I've done that is because my queen can enter in the game and I'll try to change one advantage the bishop for the knight into another advantage the advantage I try to change it into is that I've got control of the position so my opponent is defending everything okay i'm gonna go b4 and it should be a draw but i'm still hoping with my slightly more active queen that i can get some winning chances okay i'm gonna improve my king as well now if my opponent ever takes okay bloody hell gotta move quicker i'm gonna go here we do have 10 two seconds out of the move but that goes very quickly i'm trying to gain some space on the king side now and I'm going to keep the queens on because my opponent has moved his king to the center. So I'm thinking his king could be a target. And now we're going to use the rook to target those pawns over there. And I think the reason my opponent is in, has become in a bit of trouble is just a slightly more activeness of my pieces. My pieces are slightly more active than my opponent's. And I could be losing this pawn here, but I'm hoping my king is going to be so active in this position, it doesn't matter. And I'm now thinking, come on, G pawn. Come on, baby, light my fire. Because the baby can't get much higher. And of course, you all know who, which band that is. One of the best bands around. So the idea is just to queen the G pawn. Uh, I'll... Do I take this one and change it to another ending? Um, okay, so this is a winning ending now. That was a really tough game because my opponent, okay, really well played to my opponent um, in that game. Um, but after rook takes here, it is losing because my king is so active. You compare the activity of the kings, my rook stops the black king coming out to play and kings always want to play in the ending. They're not, they're not that lonely child who is stuck at home. They want to come out and play in the streets. But my king is that child that's playing in the streets. And I'm probably going to win that pawn. Be two pawns up. It should be winning. Rufus Doofus. You played a very good game there. Um, so well done. And we will play another game quickly. Declan. Let's play you Declan. You were in there quickly Declan. Okay. Well not if you cry. I don't like. You know. You don't need to cry. I don't like people who beg. We don't need to beg, do we? Let's not have any begging, please, Declan. I'm only joking. You're allowed to. You're allowed to give a little tear. Okay, come on, Declan. Let's play. So we will. Uh, we're going to do two games and then look at those two games using G chess. So we 
I think, should we look at that? Okay, let's look at that one first now. Let's do that. So, um, into, in order to improve uh, the site that we're doing, uh, that I'm using, is gchess.com. And they say one of the best ways to improve at chess, I'm just going to get rid of some of these PGNs because it's crowding it up. So I'm just going to delete them. You can save these if you want to in GChess. We're just going to look at that last game and we're going to see where either me or my opponent went wrong. I'm probably going to do this from my point of view, but I'm just going to delete these guys. We need to make it easier to delete these games, I think. There should be an X at the top, but we will certainly sort that out. So these are all the things that we got. Yes. By the way, if you're wondering what site this is, how do I delete that one? We can't is uh you just this is the website there um that, that we're looking at so i'm just gonna the way you use this if you go to gchess.com and you're a subscriber this basically helps you improve from your own blitz games as well as having lots of other tools so under the my games tab and you just go to the website you go to my games and then where it has your handle if you're playing on lee chess which i was i'm going to put my handle in there so i'm going to edit the handle which means i'm going to change the name I'm going to look at it from my point of view because I'm trying to improve. So I'm going to put my name in there, <coughs> Ginger GM. We're going to update my name. And uh, that's not how you spell it. So that's probably why, is it? <laughs> Just tricking the system. That's how you spell it. And then we're going to have all these games that I've played. So I can get rid of that now. And the last game I played was Tribute to Jackson. So let's see what suggestions it comes up with. So in this position, I played knight to f3, which looked like um, a standard move. I'm going to look at it from my side straight away, and then I'm going to look at it from my opponent's side. So, because what this system does, it tries to find improvements for you. It's trying to help you out. So, for me, it's looking at it from my side, and it's basically telling me that knight to f3, as natural as that move looks, is not the best move. The, the best move is a3. And the reason it's suggesting a3 where it gives it half a pawn advantage must be to play b4 quickly so i'm going to use the resources here to have a look at it i like using the encyclopedia first and it will now go to my chessable course all i have to do is click on it and then i can look there's lots of different things i can look at here i'm not going to bother looking at them all now let's just have a look at one of them i'm going to look at this bit here and i'm just going to see what it says so we'll have okay this is common ideas so this is interesting i remember when i did this this is the common ideas that white should be thinking of here and i think i know these because in the actual game we had this idea of knight to a4 okay so i don't need to look at that one uh in the position um let's go oh no we can get rid of this game now can't we that was the first game i want to look at this game um so what else do we have a look at okay so also it's here it's given a3 and now e5 seems critical this is the move i was worried about at the time so i thought that this move would attack my bishop and my opponent's going to take this pawn so this is why i didn't play it so it's going to be interesting to read and this is my own writing but my memory is not very good what i should have done so bishop g5 with pressure against d5 and the point is i believe that i'm going to be taking here and if queen takes i can take here and if my opponent has to take with a pawn he damages his pawn so if something like bishop e6 now defending that one the point of a3 is shown i can just play b4 and i can get this position okay so at least i already know now that a3 is an improvement over knight f3 so if i get the same opening again I won't be playing knight f3, I will play a3. So it's good to jog my memory. I can look at the other resources here. I can look at the statistics of games played. And if I actually go back one move, knight to f3 is the move that's played most of the time. But we know from my notes that even the most common move is not the best move. And if you look actually at the statistics, and this is where it's very useful, look at the statistics here. Well, look, knight to f3 only scores 36% for white, but the move a3 scores a massive 63%. So this is another tool that you can use to find the best moves. And of course, 
our deep computer analysis will help you out there. So this is very interesting. So okay, so I know I know to use A3, but where did my opponent go wrong? So I was trying to use this stream to help my opponents as well. So we're going to put in my opponent's name so I can show you how it works from the other side. If I can spell his name, what's his name? Tribute to Jack Johnson, all one word. So I'm just going to now all you do, you go to my games in G Chess. You can all do this. You do have to subscribe to get all the features. You know, we've got to be able to pay Bjorn his dinner money. And then here you just edit the handle. It's so simple. We press the edit handle. You can do it on chess.com or Lee Chess. On Lee Chess, I'm going to put in my opponent's name. I'm going to update. I'm going to bring up. I'm going to close this little window here because we've already got all of his games. And I'm going to look. We can look at any game that he's played. And imagine this is you. You don't have to look at every game one by one. You can play 10 games of Blitz. And then you can be like, right, I've had my fun. I've done one hour of playing Blitz. And now after that one hour of doing blitz i'm going to do one hour of actually learning chess so i've had my fun for an hour now i'm going to do some work so i'm just going to look at these games and see what improvements i can learn in the opening and i'm going to save them in my own folder so let's just have a look what it comes up from my opponent's point of view so from my opponent's point of view it says here let's see if we can get this up now where is it uh hopefully this will work Da, da, da. okay has it given let's see this should give is that the right handle let's see let's refresh the games and i'm hoping this will get it from my opponent's point of view so we are refreshing i'm just going to refresh the page this is still a little bit in testing we're supposed to be releasing tomorrow so hopefully um uh <laughs> Hopefully this will be all right by then. I'm going to refresh the games and let's see if we can get it from my opponent's point of view. We should be able to. Otherwise, it's good. Oh, we have. Great. Brilliant. So you can see the last time we did it was from me. But again, the way our algorithm works, we're now doing it from my opponent's point of view. My opponent was black here. So let's let's imagine you're, you're now my opponent and you can see what, what he did wrong. So it will come up with different results. So we get the same position we talked about. And that was after this move. And already it's suggesting that maybe knight c6 is not the main move. But it doesn't seem to be a mistake, a big mistake. But the one of the main moves it's suggesting here is e6. So you can look at the other options here. And you can see that e6, again, you can use the same, the same analysis tools here. We've even got the chessboard short and sweets here. This is my Jabava London system. But why would you use that when you've actually got in the encyclopedia the little book thing? You can bring up the encyclopedia and you can have a look at the various lines here. Uh, but where did he really go wrong? Because this seemed all right, Bishop G4. But as we go a little bit further forwards, it seems that maybe Bishop C5, which is the move I thought he would play, if you can remember, is a mistake and in actual fact knight d7 the computer and i'm learning a bit about this thinks that knight d7 trying to very patiently take that pawn is a much better way of doing it because then he doesn't lose the bishop pair so my opponent can learn he can do the same pretty much thing but instead of playing bishop takes c5 this knight d says improvement if he wants to have a look at that well we can bring up uh games played here and you can see that Andrew Tang lost to Yu Wang. So let's have a look how this happened. So after this, white played h3. Okay, the bishop came back. And now black just took this pawn. And the difference between this and the game I played is that black has this dark square bishop, which I feel is a very useful piece in the position. And let's have a look. Well, this does look dead equal, doesn't it? And white played the same idea I played, but the difference in maybe this game what is going on here this is crazy as hell is after knight b6 wow that's a blunder and a half isn't it that must have been a blitz game there but this knight d7 looks like a good move um and well hikaru's played it as well wow so this is i mean if it, i mean this is this is how you can use the system so i'm sort of showing you how you can use the system and the really cool thing is 
If you know Hikaru's played a move in the opening, even though he lost to Daniel Naroditsky, he's played it on a couple of times. Duches, that is Daniel Dubov. So just by looking at the names of players who played this, you can work out that knight d7 is a damn good move. Now it's always fun to see Hikaru lose though, so let's just have a look at that. I'm joking. I like Daniel, everyone loves Daniel Naroditsky. Is how did this play? Well, it went here. Uh, we can all, by the way, you can always turn on our computer analysis here if you want, which takes a while to update, but it will update there. And generally it thinks white has a little advantage here. That's interesting. But um, going back to the game, let's see. The C4 seems to be the best move. This position must be equal. It must be even. Why, why should white be better? Pretty even position. If you've got the black pieces, getting the equal position is, um, is, is not a problem. So... Uh, so these are the, these are the interesting resources that it brings up basically. So that's why we created it and it's basically go I, I would just recommend you give it a go. You just go to my games and you can look at all of your games. Let's pick another one. You can analyze them. You can find all these recommendations of what you should have done in the opening. Um, I will go to the Ginger GM site now because I want to show you one more thing. And this will be included on the my games thing. Let's just see, uh, that's up. So we did say uh, the video thing, and I, I wanted to just use this one, or we've got to analyze it first. Let's see. I don't know if you can press it, and I can. And this is actually on the site as it is at the moment. And the one thing I did want to do, you remember we were talking about this A3 move. This, this is available in the non-beta thing. I wanted to actually look at the video of this the ginger gem video and as you recall if you've got the ginger gem video you can load the video here and you can play the ginger gm video which is the professional video and it will do the time code here so just for me i want to know what i said about a3 because i can't remember what i said about a3 so i hope you don't mind i'm going to play the ginger gm video this is from the ginger gem shop and just try to remember the video so let's just let's just have a look at that now problem now and because we got a pawn on a3 because we got this pawn on a3 b4 is, is coming so let's have a look at that last line e5 bishop g5 and if bishop e6 for example well we go b4 and i i, I don't i think this is actually quite a safe pawn to be honest uh, we, we, because the bishop's outside a lot of positions in the slot the bishop's here but having it here we're gonna develop we've got we got a lovely pawn i mean i don't really see where black's compensation is here I don't think it's enough i just don't think so and uh what's the only move we have to watch out for here which is what press and a played was d4 and i think this is the only line we just need to be a little bit concerned about where black goes for it and here i think we should just take on d4 e takes d4 is is really the only only threat because black's got to try to keep tempo and now knight to e4 is, is forcing this is a little bit forcing line but you should better find these natural moves and it actually fresene now played uh queen d5 if, if if again if black doesn't do anything here we're just a pawn up you know we're simply a pawn up so, well again I, I i'm actually finding this very useful myself because as i just recalled i couldn't remember any of this so by playing the time code of my video i'm now getting much more convinced that a3 is the move to play which is great so i'm learning it's always good to learn um okay thank you by the way to anyone who's subscribed and you know we are talking at the moment about g chess and um also i'm playing blitz games but we are now offering a year subscription to g chess for the price of 10 months so go and get yourself subscribed if you want to use all the features here you have to have the ginger gm video to make this feature work but to get everything else you can subscribe in order to um, improve your game. So it's a great way to support what I'm doing as well. If you want to support my streaming, everything else, then get involved. But let's go back and now, who wants to play a game? So who's next? We'll play another game and we're looking at your games on Lee Chess as well after we play them. So we're going to see where you went wrong in the opening. So hopefully I'm helping you guys improve as well just by using g chess you're also getting my chat uh where we're going through i prefer to play subscribers to the channel if possible 
let's catch up with some of the chat here um there's quite a lot of chat if i miss your chat i apologize um uh okay you've got to tell me you've got to tell me your name is it mole skinner okay mole skinner you are oh declan did i oh declan i did say i was going to play you okay declan i did say i was going to play you let's get it on so okay i'm going to play declan now and we might make this the last game of the day because unfortunately i've got to um do some other work um and let's see so my opponent is now going for e4 so what am i going to play well uh, someone mentioned earlier the dragadorf variation so i'm going to give that a go i'm going to play the sicilian with c5 and let's see if declan wants okay declan's going for the open sicilian so we'll take that one knight f6 here and black line i could have played the black line david abbott but i know we're talking about the dragon and I'm going to play the dragon. And this is something that I, I played against Shearoff actually once. And I got a very good position. Now the dragon proper is bishop g7. This is the main dragon move. Um, I might actually play the main dragon. I mean a6 is the Dragodorf. Do we still have the Dragodorf uh, guy in, in the chat? I don't know if we do. I think I'm going to go main line. Let's go main line. I'm going to play main line dragon. Bishop to... Uh, g7 okay he's gone f3 i'm gonna just develop this is all quite well-known stuff here do i think um do i think uh what's that playing correspondence to chess helps you i think you know if you want to get better at playing chess any kind of chess generally helps you the only thing to be careful about is blitz and blitz and bullet uh playing too much blitz and bullet can make your your chess worse okay now the little system i play here i play a very risky system with bishop d7 and rook c8 it's not particularly good so i only do it occasionally in blitz if white knows what he's doing so it's going to be interesting from declan's point of view to see if he knows what the right line is here declan that's a lot of fours you got there four fours one so do you know the right way to play here but the good thing about the dragon is you get very exciting positions white castle in queen side um i'm probably going to castle king side and it's going to be who checkmates who first so certainly an exciting game now the next move i'm going to play may look suicidal but let's do it i'm castling into his attack but i'm going to try to get my attack now to start coming White's idea is simply to take on g6, bring the bishop here, and then checkmate me on h7. So I need to do something. I'm going to try to attack him on the queen side. So very exciting double edged position. This will be really interesting to analyze uh, with g chess. Okay, now this move, I'm not sure if it's correct because there's a standard idea here that I know from understanding the dragon a bit, and that is to take the bishop. When he can't take with a rook, which he might like to play, but he has to take with a queen. And when he does take with a queen, he loses control of c3. And that will allow me to play rook takes c3. And this will get me, this will do two things. Number one, it ruins his king, so I can try to now get my queen into his position. But number two, I eliminate that knight. Why is that knight such an important piece? Because white is trying to checkmate me on h7. The only piece stopping the checkmate here is my knight on f6. That knight is guarding it. Now, if white has the knight on c3, he can play knight to um, d5 here at some point to get rid of that defender. But now that I've got rid of that piece, I'll just continue attacking while I'm talking. It's very hard for Declan to checkmate me here. Let's say he captures. I capture with the f-pawn. He, he goes g5. That's the only other way he can try to get rid of my knight. Well, my knight can come over here. And that buys me a little bit more time to block the checkmate. Now, I don't know. I mean, I, I think white is still doing okay in this line. White's certainly not worse in this variation. Um, but, 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 but. I do get a little bit of counterplay here and I get rid of this attacking knight, but very exciting uh, position. Now, 
my idea is certainly to take on c3 and then given a chance I'm threatening queen a1 check and if king d2 queen takes d4 check now if he defends this pawn I can put more pressure on that pawn by bringing the rook over and he's now starting a counter attack now I want to play the most aggressive move but if I take on c3 he will go pawn takes h7 if I take the knight he takes the queen checkmate if he takes there I go king here he goes queen takes rook checkmate so I need to take this back I can't take with the h pawn queen h8 is checkmate I need to take with the f pawn this is the best defensive way and another thing I can try to do now I can try to get my rook to f7 because that gives my pawn extra protection and this is another common way to defend I remember someone telling me a long time ago that if you get a fianchetto rook Thank you for this, uh, the sub there, Tung Dil. If you ever get a fianchetto rook, which I'm aiming to do here, your opponent can't checkmate you. Now, I don't know if that's true, but a fianchetto rook is a very, very good defender. Um, Dido mentioned I am vegan. Glad you can catch me live. Nice to do that. Um, We'll probably even put this video up on YouTube later, I'd imagine. But glad, glad, glad you uh, got me live. Uh, Jensen Lynch, thank you uh, for subscribing. Probably, I'll be honest, I'm probably not going to have much time to play anymore after this. Just because I've got work to do, like other work. Uh, I've got to I've got to get G-Chess. I've got to do some stuff for G-Chess. And if you guys help subscribe to G-Chess, it means I can do more of these. That's my excuse. I know, I know, I've got to sell it, haven't I? I've got to sell G-Chat. And it's nice, it's nice selling things that you believe in as well. That's always fun. Okay, so this is a very interesting move. My opponent's just trying to kill me. I've got to deal with this knight because he's threatening checkmate. Now, I could even go rook f7 and just try to defend. I don't want to take with a pawn. I might be able to defend this, but after pawn takes, can, do, I t do I grab this one and, and be like, ugh? I'm really brave. Oh, I don't know if I'm that brave. Am I that brave? Opening up this file? I don't know if I'm that brave. I don't really like it, I have to say. Do we just play this then? Because how does he checkmate me with the rook here? If he goes here, can I just move my knight here? And then he takes, so complicated, takes g6. I take the knight, so complicated. This is why when when I'm lazy, when I'm 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 hearing Dordius is saying be be greedy. Shall I be greedy? Oh God, I guess greed is good. That's what Gordon Gecko said. Yeah, was it Gordon Gecko? But what if he goes G5 then? I'm worried about that. I take there. He goes G5. Then I can't play my knight over here. Takes G5. Can I get an? Well, I want to get an, a counter attack going against it. I think I'm going to be ended up going this move, to be honest. Uh, I'm going to play this because I don't like defending in general. I'm sure a computer would take that. It'd be interesting to look at this later. But I'm going to try... I'm just going to try to... Well, I don't like that move now. As soon as I played it, I'm like, that is a bit too... That's a bit too defensive, Simon. You wanted your rook coming over there, didn't you? Why are you doing that? I don't know. Declan is coming at me. Milky, you're right. He's coming straight at me. Never trust a, a, a man with a t cell phone that big. Oh, what? Gordon Gecko. <laughs> yeah, Gordon Gecko. What a. Uh, <laughs> he was quite a good character, though, wasn't he, in, in, in Wall Street? A very good 80s film, right? Wall Street. Typical 80s. Um, I like Wall Street. I thought it was. I thought it was quite funny. Even even the recent Wall Street, I thought was actually all right. I thought it was a pretty good film. Um, how can I be better in Blitz by by subscribing to G Chess? There you go. Easy question. Um, Blacksmith, I'm glad I've helped your chess out. That's very very kind to hear. Okay, well Declan's played a move I was kind of worried about. He's defending C3. But he's also now threatening this check. And you know what? I've got to take this knight now. I've got to take this knight now. I can't let that one sit. I'm going to just take it. I'm going to I'm going to grab the grab the gravy. But remember what I remember what I said. With a fiend chateau rook, you can never get checkmated. 
I really don't believe that now, but let's see. Do I Fianchetto or do I just, maybe I come this way. Ah, but I don't like defending. Come on, let's attack. I can't sit here defending to De the Declan monsters all day. In we go, in we go. In like Flynn. We're gonna, we're gonna grab that one. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. That was an all right, Phil. And now Declan's trying to check maybe, but I don't think he will. Okay, sh I'm gonna run out of time. Okay, if I check him, he's coming up. What do I do? What do I do? Okay, knight here. He Okay, that looks like a move. I'm a little bit nervous. Or do I start running? In, oh, I'm going to... Oh, look at this. Inspired. Run, baby, run. Run. Run for the hills and around the angles. And la 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 la. Declan playing fantastic chess here at the moment. Fantastic. And Declan, Declan is a patron. I've got to become a patron of Lee Chess because it's good to support. It's good to support uh, um, support things you you really like. And Lee Chess is brilliant, so I definitely got to definitely got to become a patron. Okay, now I'm trying to get my king over where it's safe because Declan is 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 hunting me down. Now I'm a little bit worried about some idea where he tries to come through. Now he's trying to take here and maybe get his rook in, and I'm gonna keep running. The running king. This is a little bit crazy, but I can't see what else to do. Okay, he's getting his king to a better square. Okay, oh, nine seconds. Where did my time go? Where did my time go? And now I've got my king to what may be safe. Right, I'm thinking about getting this knight like around the angles maybe. Okay, a5, go away, queen. And he's trying, okay, I'm very happy the queens have come off because I do have two knights for the rook. And in this position, I do, my knights, well, apart from I've just trapped it, if he goes f4, my knights have some nice squares, right? Like, for example, I can come in there, but uh, let's, oh dear, why do I do that? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? What am I... What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh my God, this is horrible. Um, why am I playing so badly now? My um, Declan, why are you playing so well? You're not supposed to be playing so well. Can you calm down your bloody good moves, please, Declan? Your good moves are annoying me, Declan. And you don't want to make this ginger angry, Declan. Declan, I told you to stop that behavior. Declan, no. Stop playing good moves. Declan, you're still doing it. You're not listening, are you? You're not listening, Declan. You're still playing good moves. He is actually playing really good moves. Oh my God. Oh, ah, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> well, I have to say this is quite an intense game here. And um, I'm prob, I don't know what this position is like. I've got, I've got these, uh, I've got these knights. But I got this pawn, and I, this is like my one hope, right? Is this pawn, and I've got to try and queen it. So let's push it. Let's push it, baby. And another good move from Declan. The guy is on fire. Okay, I'm going to try to come in and take this. We get the one, and now we've got to push. And oh, what's happening here? here and here this is this is a stupid game <laughs> okay i am i better or worse here i don't know if i'm better or worse here my opponent's offering me a draw come on declan can you not see that grandmaster thing next to my name that grandmaster thing means no draw please we've got to play until the bitter end because i think i might be winning these pawns with my knight and then my opponent can give up his rook for that pawn. What? What? So I've got to leave one pawn on the board in order to win this, right? Well, or I've got to stop. Oh, um, okay. That is now a draw, definitely. Um, and I will offer you a draw now, sir, if you want to take my draw. Well played. Well played. Good game there. Good game. Good game. Am I playing with a mouse pad? No, I'm playing with a mouse. I'm just very slow. That was a really good fun game. 
and um, oh, uh, did I put uh, I put Hez in the chat? I didn't mean to. That was me. That was me banging the board. Uh, well, well played, Declan. Uh, you played a very good game there, and that was a very exciting game. So um, I want to really look at that opening in a second where where it went wrong. Hopefully, it's loaded up. Uh, and I probably was winning there somewhere, but. Uh, Let's let's see if it has already updated. So I'm going to look at it on G Chess, as we've been doing already. So uh, I'll just get rid of some of these other PGNs because they're a earlier game. By the way, if you do save stuff on G Chess, if you do get games on G Chess, you can save it so you can look at it on your mobile phone. All you've got to do, you see this little heart down here. You just press heart and you save it in a folder, and then you can create your own folders. So if you've got like a folder, like for example, I've got some folders here um, and I was trying to learn this opening the other day and it had some games in it and I can just access them on my phone at a later moment, which I think is quite cool. So you can save your work as you go. Um, right, but anyway, back to this one. So I'm just gonna see what's happened there. So we've got to edit the handles. I'm gonna put my handle in. It might need a bit of time to update the game, but let's see if it's ready and it might not be ready yet because that was an intense game right okay we're gonna have to wait a little bit anyway that was a really good game thank you well Declan that's very kind of you to subscribe to have to play you more often with that generous gift to the channel but you you play very well there yeah uh holds the draw and gives five subs very very kind of you very very kind of you to do to do that and, and you played really well what can I say you played a great game Declan so give yourself a pat on the back let's analyze the game now I'll be very interested to see. Look at this, loads of suggestions, which is great. And if we go through the suggestions, I'm going to look at this from my side. And we had the dragon. Now, as you may recall me saying, I did say that rook c8 is a dubious move, but it gets very exciting games. And that can be confirmed as the computer has picked up that is given other suggestions. And normally the suggestion with the most with the most resources is the best one. This one's got four resources. And let's just have a look at YouTube. I like looking at the YouTube videos because I'm lazy. And we haven't looked at chess.com YouTube yet. Chess.com also brilliant. Oh, I don't like bullet chess though, so I'm not going to look at that one. Let's go for Eric Rosen because Eric Rosen is a great streamer, as we all know. And let's see what he says about this position. And again, you can do this. You can put any position on the board and you can find YouTube positions from your favorite author in that position, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's just play this. Yeah, it's that's better. the best square for the bishop. And the, the whole point, because the bishop, uh, at least on d7, it doesn't come to life so quickly, but you you really want to free the square for the rook to come to see Yeah. All right, now mm. here I know I should not take. So you do have to be careful. Knight takes e4 is good. Um, I want you to notice one thing, though. When white played bishop h Okay, that seems like Eric was given a lesson there to a weaker player. So probably not that useful for me um, to know what he's doing. Uh, the last one, King's Crusher. And, uh, ah, so this is this is King's Crusher uh, analyzing a game, the Sicilian Dragon. Let's just have a look what King's Crusher... This is a game by Layla. This could be very interesting. Let's see what... Uh, King's Crusher says about the position. And now G4. So there are certain options like H4, even Bishop C4, but G4, very interesting. We have Knight takes D4, Bishop takes D4, Queen A5, H4 now, Bishop E6. Now, actually, Lila actually plays A3, doesn't play King B1 just yet. Okay, again, I I'm not going to look at it now because there's a lot to get through. Um, this video, yeah, I'll put it up on YouTube, this video, so you can look at it. Um, by the way, I do, of course, know that in this position, uh, Bishop d7 is a bit of a dubious move um, because you should be, the main line is castling and trying to play d5, but um, there are other options here. But a bit later on, it got even more interesting. So around here, let's see what happened. And the last opportunity really uh, b5 is a variation but you can see here already the computer I, uh, queen a5 is the main move and this is where there are lots of lots of suggestions and this is kind of I, I think I give it in my ginger GM course 
as being the gambler's choice this queen a5 move because you've got to gamble when you play this uh, again you can look at youtube videos in this position so let's just see what that brings up just press the search button oh funnily enough i have played this um so god my memory is so bad and i played this against nemo and dina this could be interesting so i had this position before so in, in playing queen a5 instead of the move i played in the game b5 and i know queen a5 was an old suggestion by english grandmaster um oh my god not john m's uh his friend oh my god why can't i remember his name not chris ward who in his book before computers round winning with the dragon gave this move so he must be credited for that queen a5 here let's try this one out now this one's a little bit different to last time at least it'll hopefully make you both think here are you scared yet uh not yet <laughs> okay is this supposed to be bad for me <laughs> no no it, it's not it's not bad no i'm just i'm okay. just trying to scare you but uh i need to i need to try and get my revenge so I, i'm i'm one down king b1 okay and you know what are you ready for the fireworks are do you, you call by fireworks what this is a really cool combination by the way coming up are you questioning the fire really? can you what? see the combination okay, right. we yeah. are okay now let me get this right move order we're going to start with this one okay here we come right here we come i told you i told you he would do that i told you he would do this oh no oh no oh no don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's nothing to be scared yeah. of this is actually old analysis of a grandmaster called christopher ward this is what wait our... i always play into this how are you supposed to like counter this <laughs> oh you're both worried now i can see this is still okay for you Isn't but it it, this is 20 year oh. old analysis winning with the dragon and you know what no we way can even do this yeah it's 20 years old this this analysis Anyway, you, you can see it could be really interesting way. I have to say the 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 quality, the video quality went up there quite a lot. <laughs> Get rid of my ugly mug. <laughs> Bring it. Um, but yeah, it's very very interesting lines. These you can see I played that before. Uh, this this queen a five is, is an idea. But just to just to show you um, that I even looked at this queen a five move and this whole line you can see is quite dodgy. It's got many suggestions for me. But I shouldn't be playing it, and I know that. But again, you can check out all these resources. Um, in the encyclopedia, I'm sure it will say that this position is just dodgy. For example, here, after queen a5, it gives this sacrificial line that I just mentioned, which is not that bad for uh, black at all. But queen b knight b3 is the best defensive move here. And this is in the encyclopedia, so you can you can see queen c7 bishop e2 and this line this line is a little bit better for white so it's it's you know a lot of resources and the last thing i will show you about this game and i'm going to do it on the normal g chess site now so i'm just going to go through the process again um let's just see we can refresh the games hope hopefully it'll come up there um is this ginger gem video because obviously that last one i was showing you is only on beta we're just making some changes on G Chess, this is on the the new G Chess, well the the original G Chess site, and um, it was just the Ginger Jim video there, which the Killer Dragon, the Gambler's Choice. So even when I give this in the thing, I, I call it the Gambler's Choice, probably realizing that it's uh, it's it's not a brilliant idea. Uh, and what do I give here? Well, King B One. Oh dear, yeah, it's a very dodgy line. Okay, well, actually, that that's maybe not loading there because I've already loaded it up, so you won't do that. But um, interesting stream. Um, learned some opening things there, which hopefully, uh, again, if I if I do this on my own, I'll take it a bit more seriously. But hopefully, I helped out some of you guys who played me in in, in what you could have done as well and what what things. Um, so um, have a good day, everyone. Uh, and do you remember at the moment that new site I was showing you, you can buy either monthly subscription just to try it out one month it's only $9.99 if you don't like it you can cancel it it will help out all your openings in in a new way um, so do go and try it out but you can now buy yearly subscriptions so yearly subscription would be a great way to support me 
and uh, it would also help your openings out so great thing to do but thank you for the games well done to Declan who played a tremendous game there uh, at, at the end really really clever game uh, and uh, maybe I was even losing at some point during that game who knows it was it was close and it was good so thank you and thank you for watching and who are we gonna who are we gonna raid now um, I don't know let's see who should we give a raid to and I like raiding the smaller channels so we'll just have a look and see uh, well plenty of plenty of people to raid chess dojo are very good I'm very tempted to raid them um, don't think people people I know so well are online there's so many streamers now aren't there when I started streaming I was like one of the only streamers it's funny funny how there's so many now uh, let's see who do you guys who do you guys reckon I should raid then chess dojo they are very good aren't they uh, let's do it. let's let's do chess dojo uh, da, da, da. chess dojo live and these guys these guys are very educational normally so if you really want to improve your chess then they're very very good guys to 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 watch and, and learn from because uh, they they're a good bunch of people so uh cheers everyone for watching thank you uh just thought we'd play a bit of blitz try out uh help some of you guys learn from the openings and uh yeah i'll put this up on youtube anyway if some of you want to have a look and go and enjoy some good coverage now over at chess dojo uh cheers for now see you all another time bye